without further ado, uh, here is Francis Tam. Hi, sir, Francis. Hi. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, having me. I'll just share my screen here. So I'm based in Hong Kong. I've been to uh, your lovely campus, the Most Green Campus, uh, several times now. And I'm also honored to be in partnership with uh, das Marinas, de la Salle das Marinas. So um, I, I've got a, a short time that I can share basically an overview of how this can help what you guys are, are dealing with as far as uh, connecting with students that you don't normally get to see. So um, I'll just go over this uh, kind of a, a general overview. And if you guys have questions, please chat them into the chat box and I'll monitor the chat box in case if you guys have any questions that I can answer um, and, you're, and you're not able to speak, okay? Um, and I, I think after, because I'll be on for about 20 minutes and afterwards, Sir Paul can uh, fill in with any other questions uh, that you may have. Does that sound okay? Great. So um, Panopto, you can think of Panopto as a video portal here that is YouTube meets Google Drive. What I mean by that is YouTube is obviously for, for streaming, but it's streaming for the public, which we don't want. Google Drive is um, set for a specific set or group of people, and that's what Panopto can do for you, um, secure and make your videos searchable. So there is a software recorder that will, that will help the, um, how do I say, non-technical faculty easily get videos into this video portal. And you will start and stop in Schoolbook. You don't need to leave Schoolbook. You'll be logging into Schoolbook. And in your Schoolbook, you'll see Panopto, which is a video library that is associated with your course. So if you are teaching, say, three courses, you'll have three Panopto video libraries at attached to the three school book courses. And um, your students, they will enroll or they will log into their school book and whatever course that they're associated in, they will see this uh, video library. It may be empty, but you can start filling it in uh, as we go. So I guess the good news is this is not another platform. This is not something super formal. Uh, uh, super abnormal or weird. This is Schoolbook, but enabled with video. So it'll make video uh, creation, editing a lot easier. So let me um, share a, a bit more of what you could do. So this is Panopto. It's a, it's a video library. You can think of it as an octopus. And if you think of the head of the octopus, the most important thing or the most um, major component or problem that we help solve is video management. When, let's say, uh, Dasma, you guys have 10 videos. You don't need Panopto. But as your video library grows, as there's, you know, there's over, uh, over 80 people on this call right now, if, if all of you make three videos, that's, that's a very large video library already. And you're thinking about for specific courses or for specific students. And as it the landscape of the video library gets more complicated, um, I guess our value or the value that we help deliver will be bigger. So that's the head of the octopus, video management. And of course, there's um, different tentacles to the octopus. And every time I say this analogy, I remember the octopus I saw in Coron uh, with my eyeballs. It was sucking in and out of, it's a place called Coral, Coral Garden, uh, um, Coral Garden, yep, uh, in Coron. So um, the octopus has different tentacles. And the first one I've already shared is the integration with your school book. It'll be embedded in your school book. Uh, faculty and students log in the school book and they don't need to go anywhere else. That's the beauty of how Panopto is um, embedded into your school book. Next is um, automatically every spoken word that you guys are saying and every word shown on screen will be automatically indexed for search. So you don't need to do anything different than like a Zoom call. You just choose your microphone, you choose your camera, 
And if you want to share your slides or share a screen, you do that and then you present and then you're done. So after that, everything is auto indexed. And so students in school can search for any keyword in that course and they'll find that keyword shown up either on the title of a video or even in the video. And if they clicked here, they would start viewing at 18 seconds in this video. So that just helps students access and find specific content that they want. Um, you can also have these automatic words or the words that you say uh, appear as captions and these are automatic. You don't have to type them out. Um, they're searchable and we can make them uh, be available uh, as captions. Maybe I'll try to speak a little bit slower in case I'm breaking up. And uh, another tentacle is quizzing. So with your videos that you create, uh, in the web-based editor, there's a bunch of different things you can do. One of them is to add quizzing. So having, having a video in your course is better than, than no videos, but having an interactive video is better than a static MP4. So in Panopto's world, students can slow down or speed up watching the videos. They can engage in a quiz if you choose to place. The students can actually search this recording. They can add personal notes or even discussions. So it will help the students learn the content that you share. You can imagine if a student was watching a video and they wanted to take notes, they would either use pen and paper, like laptop in the front and paper down, or they would do split screen with a Word document, but it's hard to link back the notes to the video. So in Panopto, the students can take notes right in the video, and those notes are time stamped. So when they, they search their notes, they can find back where they were watching before. Another arm of the tentacle would be um, analytics. So as a, a faculty member, if you're teaching, let's say five courses, uh, this is platform wide. So like Sir Paul, he would have access to see what's ha happening on the entire platform, like entire school of uh, Desmarinas. But each of you faculty, let's say you're teaching five courses, you could see how your courses are comparing in terms of how many minutes are being watched per course or even as a comparison of recording, how many minutes are being recorded. If you recorded a specific video, let's say this video was 27 minutes long, the blue line here shows at any given moment how many students watched the video at any given time. And typically, students will not watch from start to finish. That's quite expected. They will use the searching to search the content that they want. Uh, the dark bars are when they've left a discussion post and the light bars are when they left personal notes. So as a faculty member, you can see the engagement around 10 minutes and around 21 minutes is a bit higher. And so that what that can mean is um, either they're confused and they want to jot down notes or ask questions about it, or they think it's important like exam worthy or some key points. But either way, it might be advantageous to take these two points and do some follow-up videos, maybe go a little deeper and clarify some questions. So what we don't want seeing happen is you faculty making videos and they're not being watched. You could say those videos don't have much value. The best is if you're creating video, you see what is sticking and you make more video that is applicable to the students that you engage with. So that would add more value to the content you're creating. Um, I mentioned the online editor does not require any downloads, doesn't require any special plugins. You just need a, a device and you need to have connection to the internet and that's it. Uh, the videos that you create, you have the rights to edit and the students won't be able to edit or delete your videos. Um, they only have access to view. So you guys could easily snip. Um, and good news is this editor, this um, deletion, we call it a non-destructive editor, which means all of the original content sits on the cloud and you don't have to worry about it. When you chop it up, cut out some pieces, 
uh, you can go aggressively because the original file stays on the cloud. We don't actually throw it away. We actually, what we do is just hide it. So when this is cut from the video, students just start viewing from this point. The deleted portion is just hidden, actually. It's not really ever deleted, which is um, should be good news to the you know, non-technical faculty or some of faculty that don't have uh, experience in editing videos. You could do some other things like switch out your slides, add in quizzing, add in some YouTube videos, add in a website, you can add in a PDF, you can add in um, other clips or other videos attached to this video. So you can think of the video as a shell. Once you have a video, whether it's 10 minutes, one minute, or even one second long, once you have a video shell, you could do things to it like add the quiz, add a PDF, add a table of contents, add these thumbnails. And once that shell is created, um, a lot more things can happen. Um, you should have a space um, called My Folder. And when I say you should have, you, you may not know you do have, but you do. Um, right now, Das Marinas has a site-wide license of Panopto. So each faculty member would have a My Folder section. And that is a, a great place for you to uh, create your content. You can create your content and maybe take some edits, uh, take a couple of uh, recordings. Once you're happy with it, you can just copy that and move it into your course folder. And that will be ready for your students to, to view. Um, and if you want some of the videos to appear in a sequential order, you can create some playlists, which would be um, available for you to, uh, or allow your students to watch in sequence. Okay, so I don't see there's too many other questions, so I'll just continue. And again, if you guys have any questions, please um, type it into the chat menu and uh, I'll, I'll go from there. So so these are some of the, the major elements of Panopto as far as the features. I'll share how some typical use cases um, occur. So right now it's quite common to have some video calls and you may be using like Zoom, like free Zoom. You may be having like, uh, some Facebook chats, you may have Google Meet. Um, there's a bunch of different platforms to have some video chats. Sometimes faculty want to capture that and you can just capture your screen and everything that you and your students are talking about in a Panopto video. The benefit of this is that, at, well, I'll, I'll tell you, when you start the recording, like when um, Jen started this recording and she clicked record, we don't actually know if anyone will watch it, but we click it and record it in case someone wants it later. So when you engage with your students, in the beginning, maybe nobody knows if the recording of your discussion will be reviewed later. But with Panopto, you don't have any limit to storage, so you just record it anyways. And the students will be able to capture and search any spoken word, any word shown on screen that can be linked to your course folder. And that's just an easy way to um, make things uh, available for your students on demand. So just, it's called meeting capture, but you can think of it as uh, office hours or tutorial hours, Q&A, some live time that you have to discuss. You can think about recording that in Panopto. The, uh, a major way that you'll probably be discussing um, like kind of content that you want to share is flipped. So you would just be in front of your laptop. This could be a Mac or a PC and you would open up the Panopto recorder and you can choose your camera source, your microphone. You can choose if you want to share your screen and you just click record and that's about it. Then once it gets published into your uh, school book course, which is right when you click done or stop, then it'll be auto published into that course folder. And the students that get access to that course folder will also get access to view this video. And it's uh, gonna be about this. Some of your videos may be two minutes, maybe not too long. Maybe some will be 20 minutes. I don't know if you'll be lecturing for like an hour long, uh, you might, but um, just some things to keep in mind, I'll just throw out there is sometimes when I'm recording videos, my phone will ring and I, I should keep it on vibrate, but sometimes I forget. And so what I do now is I just, I just pick it up and I just take the call. And when I'm done with the call, uh, what I do is I just 
up a couple times. That way in the editor, I'll see some spikes in the audio of the video and I'll know, oh, that's where I clapped. And I'll just cut out those 10 seconds or, or 10 minutes if it was a 10 minute call. And then I, I don't have to redo the whole video, which is uh, quite nice. Before I used to kind of freak out if a kid would walk in or you know something would happen, but now I just try to stay calm and just look into the camera, just talk about uh, your video content and then you can just uh, cut it in the editor. There is a question about, is there a maximum video size that can be uploaded? Um, nope, no, no limit to the duration. You could, there's no limit to duration. So some of our clients, they would record in a conference and some conferences would have, you know, like four breakout parallels and they would record for eight to 10 hours each, um, all into the cloud. There, there's no limit. Um, and correct any file, any digital file format is possible. Just drag and drop into um, your course folder. Um, another use case is to create um, a video assignment. So in Schoolbook, you can make assignments to your students. And typically, the assignments are text based. The students have to type in a, a document, an essay, uh, an assignment, and sometimes they may add links or uh, references, but if you want them to record a, an assignment, you can do so. And I remember Sir, Sir Roland was teaching French and he had his French students try it. So the French students would have an assignment. Let's say the assignment is, um, has like five criteria. It has to be five minutes long. You have to speak French. You have to add in these elements. You have to talk about uh, this, this river and you have to explain, you know, using these three verb tenses. And uh, then you can have this assignment worth 10 points and the students can actually record from their devices, upload into the assignment folder, which is under the course folder in Schoolbook. And that is an easy way where you can just watch the videos, give them the grades, and assign that into the school book grade center of the course. So that's just a, a neat way and quite a, a major way that some uh, faculty are using Panopto. Um, I, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I'll say in a non-COVID environment, typically the faculty are going to class and the students are going to class. And this is where Panopto is kind of most famous for is lecture capture, meaning the entire environment is recorded. The audio, the PowerPoint, your document camera, a whiteboard, maybe a camera on the students. And that allows a student that wasn't physically there to be comparable or at a, at a fairness to learn as the student that was there. And uh, when the entire environment is recorded, then every spoken word is searchable, every word shown on any screen is searchable, and that helps for students to review content. Um, when Panopto was introduced or founded at Carnegie Mellon University in a school, the idea was when students, the more notes students take, the less they hear. And the more they're listening, the less notes they have. So one of the solutions was record everything and make it all searchable. That was one problem that Panopto went to solve. And, and the next problem was making the uh, distance or remote learner equivalent to the student that could come into class. Those are the, the two. But I won't, I won't explain so much about this because we're not in a scenario where we can actually record classrooms. Um, I'll say that if you Google searched um, something like uh, Panopto top 25, you'll find that out of the world's top 25 universities, 22 of them are already using Panopto. And some of these are name brand like, you know, Yale, uh, Yale, Oxford, Stanford, um, MIT, Cornell, these name brand schools are using Panopto. But there are also some other less well-known schools or community college, technical colleges, there are small departments. So Panopto is quite flexible and able to scale uh, to some very large universities with, you know, uh, 40,000 students, 60,000 students. And also there's some small colleges with only 600 students that are using Panopto. So it, it, it's quite flexible, but um, has been around in the academia world for about 13 years. Um, the, 
does so the, a question from Sir Joshua does Panopto support multilingual transcribing of the lecture so that's a great question um, let me let me let me let me answer that in a couple of different levels because when a student is searching the video they're searching multiple layers one is the spoken words two is maybe PowerPoint three is what's captured on screen and fourth is what we call metadata so I think th I think the question is around the spoken words so the spoken words um, there are about 15 or so languages supported today and there's more in the roadmap but there's only one language per site as of today the setting is so today um, the Das Marinas language is English. So English is going to be auto transcribed and there are other languages that are supported, but they cannot be supported at the same time. Uh, so what you can do is you can upload captions uh, of different languages. That's, that's okay. But auto transcribing is just one language. Um, there is a searching of PowerPoint. If the PowerPoint is in any language, then all of the languages kind of under the sun will be able for search for languages that are recorded from the screen this could be like a website uh, those words is one language per site so similar to the the spoken words is there are about 15 languages that are available but one language per site so for das Marinas, english has been selected and then uh, the fourth category would be metadata. Metadata would be like notes and descriptions. The notes and descriptions and um, discussion, that's all uh, web-based, which means uh, any language under the sun can be searched. So if I'm typing in um, Arabic, then I can search Arabic because it's, it's web-based. So our interface is web-based. If my Chrome browser is set to English, I view it in English, but my Firefox is set to Chinese. So when I open Firefox, then everything in Panopto shows up as Chinese. So in that sense, uh, any language is searchable. So it really depends on what uh, layer is being searched. I hope that's um, a good um, description. Great, so this is interesting. So um, what, this is a question is what, will be the major issue if I have slow internet connection or sudden loss in the middle of a recording? So that's a great question. Panopto has something called fail safe recording. So the scenario is as a faculty member, you're recording. And let's say you're recording for 20 minutes and at minute 10, your internet breaks. Well, what happened before, actually for the specific example of the internet breaking or stopping, I would say, keep on recording until 20 minutes. And what has been uploaded on, there's something called, um, what is it, how do you say it? I think there's a term, but basically uploading is happening while you're recording. So if you're recording for 20 minutes and your internet breaks at 10 minutes, everything up until the 10 minute mark is already in the cloud and you just wanna keep on recording. When you click stop, uh, the upload will just pause. And when your internet gets back up, or speeds up, then the rest of the portion of the, the second 10 minutes will upload uh, when you have that connectivity. So there's that fail safe recording, which uh, should be good for you. There's another question. If the videos are in the cloud, who owns the IP? That is a great question. This is a uh, digital policy between Das Marinas and the faculty. So at Dasma, when you have non videos, Let's say you have a PowerPoint that the faculty creates. The question is, who owns that PowerPoint? It's going to be either the school or the faculty. And I actually don't know the answer to that question. But the same would be for a video that you create. So um, this is just course content that the faculty makes. Whether it's text-based, PowerPoint-based, uh, or video-based, it would fall in the same category. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm in Hong Kong. Most of the schools in Hong Kong are already using uh, Panopto quite, quite large and growing in Asia Pacific. And um, I am a couple of minutes over my time. Um, if you have any other questions, please continue to chat them in. And um, I may be available later, but the, the team, the CA, uh, 
ILP team is very knowledgeable at Panopto, and I'm very excited and glad to work with, um, with all of you. So thank you, and God bless.